this tiny $15 board can run Kali Linux. Yes, you heard that right. In the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how to install and boot Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 02W in a headless method, which means that no external monitor and no keyboard is required. I'll show you how to enable SSH and connect to your home Wi-Fi in the first boot itself. So without further delay, let's make your pocket-sized hacking mission with Pi 02W. First of all, open Kali.org and here click on Get Kali and here go to ARM. So here in the ARM, you will find Raspberry Pi 02W and you need to download this 2.8 GB of file. So there is another one called PyTail. You don't have to worry about that. Just download the recommended one and click on this. So it will start downloading and I have already previously downloaded. So I'll stop this. Once you have downloaded, next thing that you need to do is insert your SD card with your SD card reader and then insert that into your laptop. So once this is done, next thing that you need to do is you need to download Raspberry Pi Imager. So if you go there, you can click on download for Windows. So I have already downloaded. So I'll just open that. So this is Raspberry Pi Imager. So this Raspberry Pi Imager, you can choose a device. So right now we are using 02W. So select that. In the OS, you don't have to select from the existing ones because we are downloading from the official website. There is another way that you can see that in the other specific purpose, you can also find Kali Linux. But I have tried this version, but it is not giving good results. That's why I have downloaded from the original website. So from the official website, if you download, you have to use this custom method. So click on custom and then the place where you have downloaded it, go to that location. And here I can see Raspberry Pi 02W. So click on this exit file and open. Next, select the storage, click on that storage. Next, and it is asking, would you like to apply customization? Because this is the custom image, you don't have to do that. So click on no. And it will be asking to erase everything. So click on yes. So it will take nearly 10 minutes to complete this writing and verification. I'll just fast forward this. Now you can see the write is successful, which means the OS has been flashed onto your SD card. Click on continue. So next thing that you need to do is unplug the SD card reader. Next, plug in the SD card reader again. You will see under your file manager, these are the files that are available in the boot section. So as I said in the beginning, we need to enable SSH, right? That's why you need to go to new and create a text file, that text document and do control A and SSH. You need to have no extension, which means .txt should not be there. Just type SSH in the file name and it will ask for yes or no because there is no extension. So click on yes. So now you can leave it as empty that is SSH. Next thing that we need to do is create a WPA supplicant file. So go to again this text document created and then select WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. So this is a configuration file. So you need to type this exactly. Then again it will ask for Yes or no. So you need to use yes. So now try to open this with notepad plus plus and then you need to paste here this text. So here you need to rename with your Wi-Fi SSID and then password. The most important thing is if you're using Windows, it will do some encoding wrongly. So you need to click on convert to UTF-8 under encoding and under edit, you will also find EOL conversion keep it unix so these are the two things that you have to do compulsory so these are the two files that you need to add so next thing is you can eject this so right click on this boot eject so it has safely ejected now you can remove your sd card reader from your computer and also remove your sd card and plug it onto your pi 02w so now you can see i have inserted the sd card onto this pi 02w and this is the mini HDMI port converter to HDMI 
I have connected this to my external monitor. This is just an optional thing so that you can uh, view what is happening. And if it is not available with you, that is also fine. So next thing that you need to do is you need to boot your Raspberry Pi by connecting to the power supply. So I have connected the power supply. Now you can see the screen. So this is how it looks for the first time whenever it is loading. Even though if you don't have HDMI or the screen, then don't worry. You just have to wait for two to five minutes so that this entire setup is completed for the first time. Now is the time you can use your angry IP scanner to scan the IP address. So you can download this angry IP scanner from Google and here you can download it. It is free for download. Once you open it, you will be able to see the IP range. So you can put if it is showing wrong one, you can put the correct range of yours by finding from the IP address. So go to CMD. So type IP config you'll find which range your Wi-Fi is using. So you can see 192.168.29.1. So you can use that range and provide it here and click on start. By doing so, you will be able to see what is the IP address assigned to your Pi 0 2W so that you can connect the SSH using that IP address. So it will take nearly two minutes to complete all the 255 addresses. Now you can see host alive as six. So I can sort by ping and here you can see 200 got added recently. So I can either use putty or I can use regular command prompt. So I'll just open regular command prompt and I'll use SSH, give the username as Kali and this is the IP address and enter. I have used instead of default Kali and Kali username, I have used pi and my different password. So I'll be using that, but you can use your own password or the default password. So you can try Kali and Kali. If it doesn't work, then you can use your default password that you have set in Raspberry Pi. So now you can see this is visible. So next thing that we can do is we can check the IP addresses. So IPA, which refers to what are the different networks that we have. So current network that I have is this one, which is WLAN 0 and one more is loopback. So this is the network that is 192.168.29.200. So what I can do is I'll try to search what are the different devices that are connected to this network. So I can use sudo nmap-sn with this subnet. So it will do, so I provided the password. So it will try to search all the devices that are available. So here you can see it is trying to search one device, another device, so like this. These are the different devices, IP addresses we can find here. And another thing that you can try is, you can try to find out what are the different Wi-Fi's that are available. So different access points that are available around you. So you can find all of them. So signal also you can try to find. So this is my Wi-Fi and other Wi-Fi's also you can see and their speed, the rate you can see as well as you can find out the signal. So you can use Control C to get out of this. So next thing is, if you want to install the remote desktop and also the desktop light version onto this Kali Linux and want to utilize the GUI and then access it remotely. So for that, what you can do is first you need to do the sudo update and then you need to install some of the packages. So first is XFCE to create a desktop environment and we are going to use X2Go server and client so that it is uh, going to use remote connection just like we have RDP VNC. So this X2Go is lightweight. So you can use that for accessing the remote desktop. So in the meanwhile, what I can do is so I can go to X2Go and so click on download. So I can download X2Go client version. So if I click on it, then I can click on this so that it will download the Windows version. So I have already downloaded and installed it. So I can show that X to go here. So that client is already there. Now we'll see it is completed or not. Now the update is almost getting completed. What I can do is I can paste this list so that it will download Kali desktop, X to go server, and then for X session. So you need to install all of this. So it may take five to 10 minutes based on your speed. In the meanwhile, I'll open X2Go again. 
and set up this. So I'll just delete the previous session. I'll show how to create a new one. So click on session, give Kali. So click on this new session, enter the host that is 192.168.29.200 and login as you can give Pi as a user or Kali that is a default one. You can use that and then click on XFC. So this is important and then go to media. So you can disable this sound support, printing, etc and connection you can keep it normal one so then click on ok so once this completed we'll try to check that so now we can see this is completed the installation now we can try the status of x2go so this is mentioned as disabled but we can see this is installed so we don't have to worry so now what i can do is click on x2go click on this new session on the top and then type the password so it is asking whether to terminate the connection then i'll click on no so it is asking to update the host key because i have previously worked on it so for you it won't be coming then if it is coming click on yes so it may take two to three minutes so it has opened this another window and it will take some time because this pi 02w is having very low ram and uh, processing speed this may take so much of time now you can see the home page and it is asking for password you authenticate now you can see the desktop is completely loaded and you can work on it but i suggest not to use the desktop for this 02w because it is very slow and that's it this is how you can install kali linux into your pocket sized raspberry pi 02w and enable the desktop and also try out different commands if you found this video informative, please type helpful and smash that like button. If you are interested to learn how to install Raspberry Pi OS on 02W, then click on the link from the end screen or description. Your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like this. So please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another interesting video.